Hey everyone, Tomas here, and welcome to another Zenless Zone Zero video. And today we'll go over our CM Bros team building guide. That's right, resources in this game is somewhat limited in the beginning, so you don't want to waste them. And we'll go over some of the most powerful and popular teams while offering free to play options. Now, there are two current team sets available, and the first one's your standard team set using a stun character to stun the enemy, and of course, swapping to your main DPS when they're dazed. So, the second team is inflicting status such as shock and burn and they do okay amounts of damage as well in the right team compositions and there are new characters such as Lucy and Piper that can do both types of damage now in this video we'll try to cover as many characters as we can and go over some of the best units for their roles but also fitting in free to play characters so that if you don't have all of these new shiny S ranked units that's okay because we'll swap the free to play options in so without further ado let's get started now, before we even take a look at the team compositions, there are two things that you must know. First of all, the placement of the characters actually matters. As you can see here, I've got the Mono Ice Meta team composition for the launch of the game, but the placement is wrong. That's right, Sokaku, as the supporting character in this team, needs to be placed in front of Alan. Now, you can have Alan in position 1 and Sokaku in position 3, that's fine as well, but Sokaku needs to swap into Alan. That because the attack buff, the ice damage buff needs to be inherited by Alan, and when your support uses their skills, you have the opportunity to call in an assist attack, and that is calling in the next character in position, and most likely is going to be your main DPS, and in this case, Alan. So you need to place her right after the support. So that's trick number one. Now trick number two is extremely useful in actual combat. As we know, when the enemy's attack flashes orange, you can press the space bar to get the next character in line to come out and parry that attack or dodge it if you are a ranged character. However, did you also know that if you press the button C, this summons the previous character in line to allow that character to come out and parry that attack. So you're not locked to the next unit in line, but rather it can go both ways, which is very, very helpful in actual combat. And now that we're on the same page, let's talk about the team compositions. And starting us off, we've got the standard team that focuses on using a stun character to do increased daze damage to, of course, stun the enemy and they'll take additional damage. And this also allows your heavy attacks to trigger chain attacks, allowing you to support to come in and then your main DPS to come in to get all of these bonus effects. And of course, we already have the most powerful standard team or the mono ice team in the sense using Lycon as the uh, daze damage or the stun character and the Alan the rate up character as DPS and of course Sokaku as the support and they just work so well together and make sure that uh, you've paid attention and play Sokaku in front of Alan for the placement and positioning and you can see that uh, this team will absolutely destroy everything in game right now because a lot of the enemies at the release of the game is going to be weak to ice and of course Lycon and Sokaku of passives from the chain attacks will trigger and offer those additional buffs to Alan, making her extremely, extremely strong. Now, if you're interested, I will definitely have an updated Alan guide in the next coming days. And you can also use Sokaku at higher dupes as a main DPS, especially at dupe 6. I know it's still a long way off, but uh, she is free. That's right. So at least you have one copy there. Now, if you don't have some of these characters, if you don't have Sokaku, you can use Nicole as well because she fills that role and looking at some of the other team compositions you can see that uh, ambi can replace a icon for your free to play choices and uh, even billy can be your main dps if you don't have the likes of nakomata or alan or any of the other main dps damage dealers but the most key component is understanding the standard team involves using a stun character to do um, phase damage followed up by a support that either buffs your team or debuffs the enemy me and then you let your main dps to come in with the chain attacks at the end to do massive massive amounts of damage now similarly in the standard team you can have a mono fire build as well and this time using Kalida and Ben as your stun and support and using Soldier 11 as the fire type main DPS and you can see that because Ben and Kalida 
has this uh, co-op mechanic built in, you're going to do significant amount of day's damage. And after that, allowing the Soldier 11 main DPS to come in and clean house. Now, in contrast to the standard day's buildup team, you also have your attribute anomaly teams. And they focus on applying the anomaly debuff on the enemy. As you can see here, in this game, there's shock, burn, and corruption, all dealing damage over time, so dot damage. And you've got assault and ice that are more instant damage in nature. Now you can see here you can apply multiple anomalies but as soon as you apply the second one the original anomaly that's already applied will trigger distortion that deals extra damage which is calculated based on the original anomaly that was applied first and this accumulates days. So you can see in the anomaly team comps you don't need a dedicated stun character as you will be doing a lot of damage and the free to play option is there in the form of Nicole that will be able to do corruption type damage but the bread and butter of this team is going to be Grace plus Anton and Rina. Of course, Grace and Rina are both S rank characters, but this team is extremely, extremely strong in the form of providing shock damage. So against a lot of the enemies that are shock weak also are mecha users, so they cannot move when shock is applied. And Anton will be able to come in after Grace applies the shock and explode all of the shock damage, which is absolutely insane. And Rina is there to provide pen ratio, so uh, dealing even more damage, she can extend the shock as well. So this team is super, super strong, and uh, you basically summon um, your um, Rina and debuff the enemy, get your Grace to come in and shock everyone, and then Anton can finally come in basically finish everyone off with the ultimate if you have it and you get to swap back into grace to clean up and uh, if you use rena to fill in the gaps in between that is more than ideal and for your stats and your gear you're basically aiming for anomaly bonus on the sub stats or the main stats when you have them and this team is really really strong and it's only better in the late game the free to play option exists in the form of nico because remember every time you apply an attribute anomaly if a new one gets applied, it will instantly calculate and end the first one via the distortion effect. So it explodes the damage over time. And of course, we can see here that the Grace and Arena composition is pretty much locked. But you have the choice of either using Nicole or later on Piper as well for your other application. And Nicole does distortion where Piper does fire or burn damage. So you can see here that the key component to this team composition is applied the distortion debuff on top of the shock team and of course Nicole and Rina can both work together to further increase the uh, damage from the team at their both supports so Grace will be your main damage dealer and your shock is going to be applied while allowing Nicole to come in and applying the, the corruption to uh, basically explode the shock damage similarly to Anton now you can also check out the website gamegazer.gg and take a look at their Zenless Zone Zero team building section to see some of the most popular teams and their loadout. That's right, they've got the characters, the engines, and even the disk drives in the teams. And of course, the bamboo choices are listed as well. You can even build your own team setup and loadout and send it to your friends, along with making your own tier list and share it with the community. So I'll leave a link down below if you're interested. Now, special mention to the uh, Piper and Lucy teams because uh, these paired up with Nekomata or Soldier 11 is actually really, really strong by applying the Assault Anomaly. And this Assault Anomaly will interrupt the enemy doing physical damage and also increased amount of days inflicted, which means that your main damage dealer is able to dish out some days damage, solving the issue of not having a dedicated stun character. And Lucy is there to apply buffs to the team so that you'll start the fight with the buff from Lucy, switch into uh, Piper and hopefully get that uh, physical anomaly off and then you will use a heavy attack, swap into your main DPS and then you can go ham after that. Of course, the choices for your main DPS here are going to be either Soldier 11 or Nekomata but having these two A rank characters in the form of Lucy and Piper who are new to patch a version 1.0 is definitely helpful in running a separate team that has not been previously available.
and there we have it and hopefully now as we approach the end of this video you have enough knowledge to build whichever team you decide to go with based on the characters you have pulled and of course whether it be the standard days build up team or the grace anomaly team i hope you have fun playing them and last but certainly not least i strongly strongly suggest you to build your team based on the first five star or the s rank character you have whether it be the raid up alan joe banner or any of the discounted novice beginner characters you manage to pull anyhow it's tamias here and uh, let me know if you enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in the next one goodbye now